In order to build a quadcopter, you're going to need the following things. First of all, you're going to need a frame. This is what you're going to be mounting your electronics on. You can either build one from scratch, or you can buy one, which is what I did. Mainly because I don't have the tools to build my own one. Second of all, you're going to want four motors. And for these, you're going to want four propellers, two clockwise and two counterclockwise. One other thing you need to take into consideration when you're looking for a motor is that you need to make sure that the total up thrust is at least double the weight of your quad. For example, my quad weighs about one and a half kilos. Each of these motors generate just under one kilo. Therefore, I'm going to have enough up thrust to accelerate my quadcopter upwards. You're also going to want four ESCs, which will plug directly into your motor and to the battery. So when it comes down to picking your ESCs, always make sure that the current on the ESC is always greater than the max current on your motors, otherwise overheating will occur. I've chosen 30 amp ESCs because my motors have a max current of 18 amps. Also, there are some ESCs that you can get where they already have these bullet connectors soldered onto the wires. However, mine were not, so I had to buy a soldering iron. Soldering irons don't cost much. I picked mine up for £10 from Amazon. Now because you're connecting four ESCs to one battery pack, you're going to want a power distributor so that you can power all your ESCs, all four ESCs, from one battery. You're also going to want a flight controller. This will basically tell your ESCs what to do. Your ESCs will plug into here and your receiver will plug into here. I would recommend the KK 2.0 board because it's definitely the best board for its price, about 20 pounds, and it's got a built-on display, so there's no need to plug it into a computer and mess about with flashy different firmwares to change the configuration. It's all done on the display. I would also recommend you get a buzzer so that when your battery's voltage is low, it will buzz and you'll be able to land it before you damage the battery. To control your quad, you're gonna want a receiver and a transmitter. To keep the tutorial basic, I picked up a cheap transmitter with four channels for about 30 pounds. In order to connect up your receiver to the flight controller, you're gonna want four male-to-male -male servo leads. Last but not least, you're gonna want a charger and a battery. I would recommend computerized chargers as there's less chance anything can go wrong when charging up a LiPo battery. You're also going to need a bunch of cable ties to mount your electronics to your frame. To begin, start by building your frame. Because my quad frame has different layers, I'm going to start by adding in some of my electronics. For this layer, I'm just going to add in my power distributor. As you can see, my power distributor is now tightly fastened to the base of my frame. Before I add the next layer to my frame, I'm going to want to plug in my ESCs to the power port. Remember red in red and black in black. It should look like this when you're done. Now I'm going to mount the third layer of my quad frame to the base of the frame. What I'm going to do now is move this aside and I'm going to take my arms of my quad and I'm going to mount the motors on top of them.
Now that I've mounted all four motors onto each arm, I'm going to start mounting them onto my main frame. What I'm going to do now is mount the board to my quadcopter, making sure that the arrow pointing forwards on the flight controller points forwards to the front of my quadcopter. Once you have your flight controller secured to your quadcopter, plug in the first ESC into the top connection, which is the motor one socket, with the black wire on the edge of the flight controller. Now take your receiver and your four male-to-male -male servo leads and plug them into your aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder sockets. Now connect them to your flight controller. The aileron should connect to the aileron. The elevator should connect to the elevator. The throttle should connect to the throttle and the rudder should connect to the rudder. Again, with the black wire on the outside of the flight controller. Once you've done that, take your battery and plug it in. Now what you want to do is hit the menu button, scroll down to load motor layout and select the layout you're, you've built. In this case, I've built a uh, quadcopter in an X configuration. Are you sure? Yes. Now it will show you which motor you should plug into which socket here and which direction the motor should be spinning. So now plug the rest of your ESCs in according to what it's showing. So this ESC should plug into the motor 2 socket This ESC should plug into the motor 3 socket. And this ESC should plug into the motor 4 socket. Now, unplug the battery. What you're going to want to do now is turn your controller on, push the throttle all the way up, and hold down the first and fourth button of the flight controller. Now plug in your battery as you're holding down these buttons and don't let go. Once you hear that chime, push the throttle all the way down on your receiver. You should hear it again. Now let go of the first and fourth button. Now unplug the battery. This has calibrated your ESCs. Plug your battery back in. Now arm it by pushing right on the rudder at zero throttle for a few seconds. The LED should turn on. Now push your throttle up to make sure that all motors start at the same time, which they do. Now you want to make sure that elevator works, push forward 
and your back two motors should spin up, push backwards, and your front two motors should spin up. Now check aileron works by pushing right, your two left motors should speed up, and left, your two right motors should speed up. Now you want to disarm it by pushing left at zero throttle on the transmitter for a few seconds. Now make sure that all the motors are spinning in the correct direction. Check this by going into your menu, show motor layout, and that's what you should see. So what you want to do is arm it again and push the throttle up and make sure that all your motors are spinning in the right direction. This motor should be spinning clockwise. which it is, so I don't need to change that. They should be spinning anti-clockwise. Which it is, so I don't need to change that. This one here should be spinning clockwise. It's not spinning clockwise, so what I'd need to do is take two of these wires and simply just swap them. like so. Now it's spinning clockwise and this one should be spinning anti-clockwise. This one isn't so I need to swap two of these wires as well. Now all four motors are spinning in the right direction. Now what you want to do is push the throttle up a bit, pick it up and rotate it because you want to make sure that the gyros are working effectively. The motor that goes down should accelerate. So that's all fine. Now disarm your quad and take the battery out. Now mount your propellers on. This was a clockwise rotating motor, so I'm going to put the clockwise propeller on it. This was anti-clockwise, so I'm going to put the anti-clockwise propeller on that. This one was a clockwise, so I'm going to put the clockwise propeller on that. And this was another anti-clockwise, so I put the anti-clockwise propeller on that. Screw them on. And you want to make sure they're nice and tight. Now all that's left to do is make sure everything stays in place with some cable ties. Now that everything's nice and secure, I'm going to finish off by mounting the battery on the landing gear, which I will now attach.
Now that the battery is securely mounted, there's only a couple of minor things left to do. I'm going to take the buzzer and I'm going to plug that in to the flight controller. And I'm also going to place this on top. All I'm going to do now is take the antenna of the receiver and mount it on top of the quad. The quadcopter is now complete. 